So how excited are you between 1 and 10? 10. 10. 11. 11. 9. 11. <laughs> so uh, just to remind you, health and safety are really important. Remember, we're going on to a uh, live site. Yeah, come on, guys. You know, at the beginning of a site, what we also want to do is be aware of security. So one thing we discussed last time was health and safety. Second thing is you know, uh, site security. Right, so uh, comments, please. Comments, suggestions, what are you noticing? So you're on site, your business partners, what are you noticing right now? Yeah, cables are there, so electrics are being put in, first fixes are happening right now, as you can see. So quite a lot of work has already happened. So first fixes are the electrics, basically. First fixes, part of the first fixes is the electrics, that's happening right now. As you can see, all the cabling is going in. Yeah, so we've got the drainage there. So with the drainage, what we've done is, um, rather than just do the drainage for this property, remember we've got the second phase, which is in the land over there. Um, so we've put the drainage in for both at the same time, which means slightly wider uh, drainage. When it comes to planning, you've got your, your drawings, etc. Mm -hmm. um, but you are allowed to reconfigure mm -hmm. with situations like this, and they, that, will, that is acceptable. What you've got to remember is it's a site in progress, and um, no, absolutely, so three, three key parts that come to it. Number one is costings. You really want to, especially in, in this day and age, you do want to keep your costings absolutely low as possible, because that's your margin wherever you possibly can. Um, second thing is the practicality, because we're all aware with, with the first one that prices are going up, right? Material prices are going through the roof, mm -hmm. and your margin, you've got to keep your margin, you've got to fight for your margin. Always be thinking, how can you do it more cost effective? What's the practical approach? And thirdly, you know, you, you want to make sure you're doing it on the right side of planning and that the structure is sound. Okay, okay. should we go upstairs? couple of points. First of all, you're looking at minimum 37 square meters when you're doing internal conversions now. So you want people to be living there in a, in a, in a nice environment, don't you? Like we're going to keep the windows here, we're going to keep the bay with the nice lovely curved windows. A um, little bit more expense, but not a lot more expense. So you've got to really sort of see where you're saving money and where you're spending money. Yeah. Yeah. A little tip about the ceiling height is um, it's flexible. So in terms of the ceiling height, there isn't actually a specific requirement that it's got to be a certain height. So within reason, you can actually drop a ceiling lower or if you've got, you know, like downstairs, for example, on the ground floor that we're looking at, there's not so much height. So you can have a slightly uh, uh, a lower ceiling. Um, here we've got a slightly higher ceiling, but you, you have that sort of flexibility. So this floor is really good. So um, it's slightly creaking. They're going to make sure that's been you know, bolted down properly. And we're going to use the existing floor that we've got here because it's a nice solid floor, isn't it? This is the floor we're going to use. So it'll be soundproofing to happen, uh, but we'll use this existing floor for that. So there's three things that you can have. Number one is save costs. Number two is a fast uh, development project. And the third thing is quality. Yeah, You can't have all three. Okay, This is absolute the fact. So what we're working on is number one, quality. And number two, cost effective. Would you agree those are the most important? Yeah. Yeah? Now thirdly, I'm not saying the time should go way out of uh, proportion. There is a timely manner to it. Uh, however, that can slip a little bit because you're allowing it to slip. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The question you've got to ask yourself is, is it a vanity project or an ego project? Or is it a business project where you actually want to make some money from it and have a, you know, an asset and legacy for your, uh, for your family and all the rest of it? So the view that we take is that we're on quality and we're on cost effective. So the kitchens will be... Uh, Good quality kitchens, none of that eBay stuff that literally falls apart you know, six months, nine months later. Because that's cheap. Cheap is very expensive. And that will cost you more money in contractors coming back. So we look for a mid-range mid, mid kitchen. Uh, it will be white gloss, good, uh, reasonable quality that uh, you know, is going to last for at least 10 years. That type of scenario, that type of vibe. Great. Do you want to have a look upstairs? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Let's go to the fence. This is the penthouse. Um, look at this beautiful ceiling for those of you here for the first time. And uh, this is going to be one story, uh, one story, two bedroom penthouse. So three key points you need to be aware of. Firstly is always be working with the building. 
So look at where the partitions are, where, what, how is the wall structure, where are the pillars, etc. Always be working with that. Secondly, is also be thinking about you know, the, your price points in terms of how many units you can get out of it. Um, as we're discussing, we've gone for nine flats rather than 10, because that 10, yes, would be extra revenue for the 10th flat. However, you end up, uh, you know, social housing, etc. You've got to give a lot back for that as well. So, yeah, you've got to, you've got to find your, your key optimum point of where you're going to monetize this the best, right? You can notice things in other properties, like residential properties, um, where the, it looks like the floors come away from the wall. Yeah? Um, and it looks like it's a structural problem, but it's not. It's literally just the joists. So when you're looking at things like this, you, know, uh, you can get, uh, just get a visual inspection done uh, by a structural engineer, um, which is a lot more cost effective. Your one word or emotion for today. Over to you. Inspired. Inspired. Yeah, I'm certainly inspired. Yeah. Inspired, yeah. yeah. It open your eyes a little bit. Yeah. Real development, yeah? yeah. Does it help reinforce the training? Yes. Yeah? Ah, good. No, it does, doesn't it? Because, you know, it's, it's real stuff, right? It's a good live model to see. Good live model to see. Interesting. 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 Yeah. Practical. Practical? Met my expectations. Um, okay. Put certain things in place for me. Ah, oh, lovely. That's good. That's the whole point of this. How about yourself? We're gaining knowledge from each other, isn't it? Yeah. This is it. Dream team. Kingsley, what's your word, sir? Another building site. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and Rish? Progress, visionary. Progress? Uh, informed. Informed. Satira? Um, inspiring, I think. Inspiring, yeah. CC? Knowledge. Knowledge. Lots of notes. Lots of notes, because everyone's like, I'm doing this on my project coming up. <laughs> By the way, you know, Rim and I were doing a project in Eltham. Intriguing? Inspired. Inspired? Uh, educated. Educated. Anna? Exciting. Exciting. Last but not least? I'm glad I came. No. My word is family, for some strange reasons coming through. Oh, uh, yeah, so, yeah, thanks for being part of this, lovely. Uh,